Welcome to this photo location about the Cotswolds, an area of outstanding natural beauty in Britain. An online blurb book featuring most of the places mentioned accompanies this program. Just go to the blurb website, put my name into their search engine, and you should find it. The Cotswolds are a line of gentle hills stretching northeast from Roman Bath towards Shakespeare's Stratford upon Avon. Westwards, the land tilts up to form a continuous escarpment overlooking the Severn Valley, its river winding through Houseman's coloured counties of Worcestershire and Gloucestershire, whilst to the east it dips gently towards the Thames Valley and the University City of Oxford, ending at Blenheim Palace. It was never designated as a national Park, but that is not to suggest that its scenery is any way the poorer. The Romans called it Aqua Sulis, but we know it as Bath. During the first century AD, the Romans regarded the hot springs as sacred to the goddess Sulis, having curative powers. By AD 75, they had constructed the Baths and Temple that are the foundation of today's UNESCO World Heritage Site. At the southern tip of the Cotswolds, the city of Bath is uniquely situated in the Avon Valley. Terraces of Georgian houses rise in tiers from the valley floor, crafted from local stone and best seen photographically from either Beach and Cliff or Prior Park. Uliberry is an Iron Age hill fort dating from 300 BC and was occupied until 100 AD. It is situated on a spur of the Cotswold Escarpment at around 750 feet above sea level. The ramparts are clearly visible and accessible, offering on a clear day wide-ranging views over the village of Yuli and further afield to the Vale of Barclay. Stroud is blessed by its setting, situated where five valleys meet, the main one carrying the River Froome. Of its many hills, Rodborough Common enjoys spectacular vistas up the valley, where the Great Western Railway wends its way down from Swindon to the cathedral city of Gloucester and spa town of Cheltenham. One valley from Stroud leads northwards to Cranham, where the English composer Gustav Holst composed his well-known and much-loved Christmas carol in the bleak midwinter. Nearby and surely an inspiration for any composer or artist is Cranham Common with extensive views back to Stroud. There are 99 yew trees in Painswick churchyard and legend decrees that should a hundredth grow the devil will kill it off. They are clipped annually at a special ceremony around mid-September. The market town of Painswick is not much larger than a village and contains many fine buildings of architectural merit. A mile north is Painswick Beacon, a hill on the escarpment with fine views over the Severn Valley. Sirencester is often referred to as the capital of the Cotswolds. Here the Romans established the important settlement of Corinium, second only in size to London, growing from the intersection of three major roads that included Fossway and Ermine Way. Over the years and throughout medieval times, many excellent buildings were built and, not least, the parish church dedicated to St. John the Baptist, which dates from around 1115. 
William Morris referred to Bybury as the most beautiful village in England. Much of it is indeed picturesque, but one feature that attracts the eye and camera are the Weaver's Cottages at Arlington Row, now in the care of the National Trust. Another prominent feature is the River Cone, flowing past the cottages and famous for its trout. The main buildings at Burford are built from Cotswold stone from nearby quarries. The Church of St. John the Baptist stands in its own corner and is a Grade One listed building, its lofty spire soaring above the town, a landmark for miles. Down the road towards Whitney is Minster Lovell, located on the River Windrush. It is in three parts, and Old Minster includes the Parish Church and Minster Lovell Hall, which is now in ruins. Although the church was rebuilt in the 15th century, it is thought that the history of the village goes back to Saxon times. The church is dedicated to St. Canelm, an Anglo-Saxon saint venerated throughout medieval England. As palaces go, they don't come much grander than Blenheim a World Heritage Site with over 300 years of history, it was home to the 12th Duke of Marlborough and named after the 1704 Battle of Blenheim in Bavaria. The style of the building is English Baroque by Sir John Van Brew and Capability Brown did have a hand in designing the garden, adding a few of his own improvements. Blenheim was the birthplace and ancestral home of Sir Winston Churchill, who is buried nearby at Bladen. Coach parties flock to Botton on the Water, attracted by its idyllic setting by the River Windrush, crossed by several low stone bridges. The best way to enjoy Borton's famed attractions is to stay overnight and then stroll around the village before breakfast. Only then does its true character emerge. Away from the crowds are secret footpaths leading across water meadows that can be peacefully enjoyed at any time of day. About a mile from Borton are the twin villages of Lower and Upper Slaughter. Both are connected to Borton by a network of footpaths. The River Eye flows through each village, crisscrossed by rustic bridges and framed by well-maintained properties. At Lower Slaughter, a former red brick corn mill with a tall chimney is a focal point and open to the public. Winchcombe was a place of pilgrimage, and it had an abbey that was rich and powerful. Sadly, nothing remains today, with only the name preserved in a street name. Tudor buildings survive, and the parish church of St. Peter has grotesque gargoyles that look down on passerbys. Nearby, Sudley Castle, which is 15th century has a notable garden and the chapel is the burial place of Catherine Parr, the sixth wife of Henry VIII. Hales Abbey, founded in 1246, is a Cistercian Abbey, two miles from Winchcombe, 
but dissolved by Henry VIII in 1539. Not much remains, but several artefacts can be seen in the museum. Stanton possesses all the picture postcard credentials of nearby Broadway, but without its traffic. It was an estate village, so nothing was allowed to spoil the simple classic design. It is also a little off the beaten track, tucked into a cul-de-sac leading into the hills that form its backdrop. If it ever gets busy, it will be from walkers on the Cotswold Way that passes through the village. St. Michael and All Angels Church, that dates from 1100. Broadway is the quintessential chocolate box village. Thankfully, it is now bypassed, but not long ago all traffic on the A44 had to grind its way through the village. Today, the photographer only has to worry about fellow visitors, and maybe because of its popularity, a visit has to be carefully timed to savour the village in relative peace. Like Borton, the best time is early in the day. If you wish to get away from the Broadway crowds at any time of day, but still enjoy the atmosphere of the area, an energetic walk may be taken to the summit of the Cotswolds Escarpment, where a lookout tower has some of the best views over the Vale of Eversham and Severn Valley. Broadway Tower is 18th century, a folly designed by James Wyatt for the 6th Earl of Coventry, a fashionable addition to a landscape in the spirit of Capability Brown. John Maceville described Chipping Campton as the most beautiful of all market towns. Other towns might have historic buildings that sit cheek by jowl with more recent buildings, but Chipping Camden has whole streets of historic buildings sympathetically built from local stone where nothing jars, except perhaps the cars. As traffic on the A44 grinds its way up Fish Hill, negotiating its hairpin bends, the driver will be too preoccupied to take much notice of the fantastic views opening up behind. Nearby, Farncombe is now home to a plush hotel that enjoys these fabulous views, but fortunately a public footpath winds its way through the estate, with vistas for everyone. Drawing the eye from afar is Saintbury Church, sadly no longer used for worship, but a landmark for miles and commanding more magnificent views across the Vale of Eversham to the Malvern Hills. The scenery of the Cotswolds has attracted poets, musicians and painters, all of whom have been inspired by its gentle contours and fantastic views. I trust that my contribution as a photographer also enthuses my audience.